Welcome to Moment for Mission. This is Fred Foy Strang. Again, I'm so glad you're joining me today. Today, we're going to have a summary of the first 10 episodes, in case you missed something. Well, whether you are just joining the Moment for Mission podcast for the very first time, or you've listened to each and every one, like my mama, I think it'd be helpful to have a brief review of where we've been in these last 10 weeks. But first, it's time for a Fred Foy fact. For our fact today, I want to offer you ways that you can connect with me and this podcast. You can reach out to me by email or through a voice message. My email is my name, Fred Foy Strang, at momentformission.com. I'll write you back. Additionally, I have a phone line that will deliver a message to me by way of email wherever I am in the world, 772 772- 882-7200. Just give me a call. If this podcast is beneficial to you, please rate it and leave a comment so that others may find out about it too. Thanks so much. So let's review where we've been. In episode one, the inaugural episode of the Moment for Mission podcast, I stated that our life mission directs and determines our actions toward ourselves and toward others. It is simple, but very important to realize that direction is important. Remember that yogiism? If you don't know where you're going, you'll end up someplace else. We need to know the direction in which we're heading. When we're floating around aimlessly, we can drift into dangerous waters. We then looked at the etymology of mission and discovered that it came from the Latin mito, to send, and mitiere, the act of sending. I concluded episode one with two summary points. One, a mission is a strongly felt aim, ambition, or calling. And two, a mission is an important assignment given to a person or a group of people. Episode two I called, What is Your Mission? The first step to being a person or organization on mission is simply to have a mission. Do you know where you're headed today? What got you going this morning? While affirming the need to make a living, I am convinced that life is not all about the money. Your mission needs to be bigger than you. There's a crucial need for balance between provision for ourselves, our family, our business, and the higher callings of humanity to make an impact in this world for good. I quoted from Eugene Peterson's The Message, Steep your life in God reality, God initiative, God provisions, and don't worry about missing out. You'll find all your everyday human concerns will be met. Our mission needs to connect both our head and our heart. Episode 3 was the benefits of having a mission. So what difference does it make to have a mission? That's the question I worked with in episode three. What is the ROI or the return on investment in having a mission? Figuring out our mission is hard work and pursuing a mission is harder still. So why even have one? I postulated that when we are directed by a mission, other aspects of our lives augment as well. I looked at how our health, how our relationships, and how our abundance could all augment in and through having a mission-focused life. I suggested that when we are floundering, then we might consider serving others to sharpen our focus. Quoting Mahatma Gandhi, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. In episode four, I looked at developing your mission. I asked, how do you get a mission? What do you need to consider in order to develop your mission? I took a brief look at Aristotle's final causality and goal-setting theory and surmised that it is important to have the end in mind and to realize there is a process to getting there. 
If you want to know about SMART, S-M-A-R-T, goals, listen or re-listen to Episode 4. I noted several factors to consider when you're developing your mission. It takes wisdom and discernment. It takes carving out adequate time for careful thought. It takes the discipline of writing down those ideas, editing and revising again and again. And it takes the advice and vetting with trusted friends and colleagues. Developing your mission means you are considering things that really, really are important. There has to be a drive, a desire, a determination to make progress toward fulfilling your mission on a daily basis. Your mission has to deeply connect the good thinking of your head with the desires of your heart. In episode five, I interviewed my good friend Benjamin Tarari at his camp at the foot of Mount Kilimanjaro. I love the peaceful sounds of nature in the African bush that come through in the background of this recording. Benjamin refers to his mission as his vision. Takeaway points from Benjamin's wise words are these. Do what you know, are good at, and enjoy. Don't grow weary accomplishing our mission because it will take time. It's okay to start small. The important thing is just to start. There will always be naysayers and criticizers. Don't listen to them or be beat down by their negativity. When opportunities come, Take a risk. Step out in faith. Be excited. The chance to augment your mission. And as we pursue our mission, take every chance we have to help others along the way. And I loved Benjamin's final summary. We have to love the vision, keep the vision, follow up on the vision, and wait for the vision. Episode 6 I called Defining Your Mission. When you start defining your mission, you are working toward the alignment of that for which you are passionate with your abilities, your values, and the world around you. You can hear more details about these aspects of your mission if you review episode six. Remember, a mission worthy of your deepest passions, your best abilities, and the impartation of your values needs to participate with others towards care and mutual fulfillment. In episode 7, titled Mission, Vision, Vocare, I queried, how can an informed understanding of vocation inspire us in our mission and our focus, our vision, to press on? I took a brief look at the Latin vocare and how that can profoundly shape our thinking about vocation and mission. A vocation is something that goes deeper than economy. It braces the whole of our being, doing something we love, something we feel we are made to do, called to do, something that gives us and others life, something that draws us together as a community. These are the ideas that begin to get at the essence of vocare. Vocare, vocation calling, comes from the word vox or voice. Therein, the implication is that there is a voice that calls our name and gives us a direction for our living and our loving in this world. Listen for your call. It is your mission. Episode 8 was pursuing your mission. When you pursue something, you really seriously go after it. When we really pursue our mission, we begin to sharpen our focus and learn to steel ourselves for an arduous journey that we may really not know how it's going to turn out. I shared about a time I was very close to being burnt out, and I had to make some life changes. Through that experience, I learned that pursuing a mission is not simply being efficient or hardworking or putting in the long hours. It's much more. But so often my busyness gets in the way, making me too exhausted to have enough gumption to consider developing, honing, and pursuing my mission. When we are on mission, then we can pursue our mission with drive, with determination, with passion. During episode 9, I spoke of communicating your mission. Communication is often difficult. In fact, 
It is the number one reason why interpersonal relationships don't work out. Many of us may be reticent to share details of our life and our work with others, but when we or our organization have a mission that is meaningful, then we need to share it with others. As we realize movement, change, advance, setback, and then success, it would be of enormous value to communicate that with others. Communicating our mission is paramount to its success. Remember, when you value your mission, then you can communicate your mission. Finally, in episode 10, I profile someone I consider to be a world changer, Amy Carmichael. Carmichael devoted her life to the service of God and others in India. It was not an easy journey, and there were many discouragements and setbacks along the way. Yet she had her mission ever before her, and she didn't give up. Here are the takeaways I mentioned in the profile. We are all unique and all uniquely gifted. Sometimes things just don't work out, but that doesn't mean to abandon the quest. Don't give up. An individual or an organizational mission will take time. Be patient and persevere. In order to sustain over time, our mission should have both depth and meaning. So there you have it. Phew, we have covered a lot of territory. This has been a most helpful discipline for me, as I'm always in need of reminders to keep focused on my life's mission today, even if it is getting Cecily a cup of hot tea in the morning. Remember these characteristics from the life of Amy Carmichael. Be passionate, be persistent, be pressing on. Next week, we continue this incredible journey of life by considering our mission and how we can make our lives and this world a bit better. This is Dr. Fred Foy Strang. Thanks for tuning in and have a great day.